Okay, it's five o'clock. We will call the meeting to order. Um, are there any amendments, Sarah, to the agenda? Uh, the agenda that you have at the bottom, uh, the I gave you guys an amended agenda, and you, uh, we have a curb okay. cut for Cody Wendell, and Liz, if you have time, maybe discuss the Culver Hill curb, curb situation again. Okay, um, and for guests, we have, um, looks like we have Mark Harris from the Budget Committee um, right now. I don't think I see anyone else. No. Nope. And um, I'm chairing the meeting tonight. Peter Hood is here, but he's on Zoom from home. So in the interest of just ease, I'll be chairing, but Peter will be chiming in per his normal right chairing <laughs> role. Um, okay, so our first topic for discussion is the fiscal 24 budget workshop, reviewing the proposed fiscal year 24 town budget with possible approval, action possible. Okay. So Dorinda gave us a copy of the budget and it looks like we were just talking um, earlier, just going through some of the things of how she's laid it out. It looks like she has put in um, at the end on the final page is where the capital improvement funding is. All of those line items that are in there now are ones that we've had in the past, um, ex um, with the exception of increasing back to the normal 30,000, the paving and construction fund, which we cut back last year to 20,000. Um, and then you'll see under special articles, CIP, the Middlesex a Asset Equipment Fund of $50,000 will be a special article voted um, in addition to um, on the warning, which we have later on on the agenda, um, a article to talk about actually creating that reserve fund. So there's two articles, one to create a reserve fund and then one to actually fund the reserve fund, which is in under this special article for 50K. And then otherwise, it's everything that we talked about at our last meeting um, with all the changes, which brings the budget itself to an increase of 10.24%, um, and again, that doesn't include the 50,000, which would bring it up if it had been in the regular budget considerably more. Um, what would it bring it up to to make it sort of, a, you know, if we had to yeah, so say to the town, well, in theory, if you pass the 50,000, this is an increase of, it's probably like 13 or something. 13.56. Yes. 13.56%. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. And, um, and then the only other thing is that, um, that we're not entirely clear on is um, in the special articles is we're still waiting for signatures for the Waterbury Area Service Senior Center and um, Home Health and Hospice. We're waiting for those. And people have until the... To get in yeah, Thursday at five o'clock, but the uh, Waterbury today let me know that they're very unlikely they're going to have. Okay, so the ten thousand might be taken off, which would adjust that twelve percent to yeah something right. less. I'm guessing the forty five hundred is going to be there. They've been pretty um, active in getting their signatures. No, the other one we didn't hear from was the Montpelier Senior Center, so. Oh. Can I just have a point of order? I, when you guys talk, when you guys talk about the budget, could you just talk about the budget that doesn't have the special articles? Yes. Because that's what needs to go in the warning. That's that's with the line item that's highlighted there. Because you, yes. that's, you're going to vote on that. Yes, People we're just right. voting on the budget, not the special, the special articles. articles yeah. Right. yeah. So we're voting right now in a budget that is the 10.24%. And remind me, and I'm I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, Go ahead. What's the amount we anticipate uh, taking from our ARPA funds? Oh. Remember, we took a we took a good chunk of money yeah. out with the idea that? that we would back fund it with ARPA funds. Um, let's go to the line item. Thing. Well, you talked about doing gravel. It was the gravel. With it. And um, I think there was one other line item. Maybe the most season mitigation? Maybe. But I think it was 80. What was, the, what was the amount we were talking about? I, 70 to 80. I think it was $80,000. I think it was $50,000 of the uh, gravel and, and uh, 
30. 30 for the mud mitigation, I sounds believe. Right. Yeah. That sounds right. Thank you. 32 five. And that we want to put in, um, Phil, if you're planning on writing another explanation for the town, I yeah. don't know if you are, but that we would want to have that mentioned that, you know, we're some of the line items that were not funded in here or the funding changed, mm -hmm. it was that mm -hmm. they're being replaced by ARPA funds. Right. Uh, Mark, did you have a question? Yes, Liz. I had a question on line item 146. I know we had a lot of discussion about this last time, and I just can't remember the thread of coming to 30,000 and what that was going to be used for. Subcontractor. So that was half of the salt shed mark. Right. Oh. It was it was ma making the assumption that we could split the remaining cost of the salt shed into two separate years and essentially move forward with one more year using tarps to cover the pile and whatnot and then fund another 30,000 next year. That would give us the 60 that would be needed to actually build the building. So we would actually start construction with the 30,000 this coming year? Yeah, I think that'd be a question for Eric and Vic uh, as to whether or not, you know, we can, you know, purchase it and not pay for the labor to install or how that breakout works. I don't know as if we talked about that in our last meeting. I thought what we talked about was repairing the temporary roof for next year and then building the building in the following year, which means if we built the building in June and July, we could straddle two budget periods and we'd have two, you know, we'd have to manage the money carefully, but we'd have the total sum of money available when we constructed the building. But I don't think we ever finalized that. We just talked about it. It's, it's in our minutes. Let's just, it's in last, last week's minutes. Um, we move so many numbers. Yeah, we move mm -hmm. so many numbers. Um, yeah, let's see. Towards the end. Mark says slashing one hundred thousand with that with that paragraph in the general discussion. Yeah. Do you see that? Yes, it says Mark said slashing one hundred thousand from the proposed budget. No, that okay. Here, here were his suggestions. The salt shed line one forty six. Remove fifty thousand from the seventy thousand allocated to salt shed for a total of twenty thousand. Is that what's in there now? No. Yeah, but we moved. But then that we added. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what did you do? You. Um, number two, cut 20,000 from road and gravel, line 121, and remove 30,000 from the heavy equipment CIP for a total of 10,000. But then Randy counted I, I made, different numbers. I made additional suggestions. Lower, okay. Lower the 20,000 designated in the CIP for vehicle purchase to 10,000. Um, to see if there's anything else that it says. The board did not disagree. Here we go. The board did not disagree with Mark's $100,000 cut. ARPA funds will be used to offset the cost of mud mitigation. Now the budget, now the budget is at 12%. Randy said he'd like to use more ARPA money on road work, but leave the CIP as is, other than the opportunity fund, which we did. Randy proposed reducing the salt shed to $20,000 leaving mud mitigation at 37.5 and allocating 30,000 for road gravel. So right now for road gravel, it says 30,000. And that Randy proposed 20. Is that what you said? Um, no, leaving oh. mud, um, allocating 30,000 oh. for road gravel. So okay. that's in there. And we were going to add 50k to gravel from ARPA to make it 80,000 instead of 100,000, right? That's so, not right. yeah. Right. So, no, no, no. I'm just. We're just talking about last week. Like last last meeting is what we said that we would make gravel a total of 80,000, 30 in the budget, 50 from ARPA. Yes. Okay. Then, the salt mud mitigation is under. Where's that mud mitigation? mud mitigation? What line is That's that? That's going to be before that. Under contracting. Under contracting. Okay. Be. What line is that? Um, line 20. 
202. Okay, so line 202 is 37.5, as Randy suggested. Um, yep. And he, it doesn't say how much in ARPA. Um, and then it says Randy proposed reducing the salt shed to 20, but it's at 30 right now. Okay, yeah. so we could so take I think, it. I think we discussed after that okay. about splitting it, splitting the difference because it was 60,000 needed and we said we talked about okay. splitting it over two years. So half the salt shed is um, is is in FY 23, 24 and second half of salt shed will be yeah. 20, 24, 25. But so we're not using any ARPA for the salt shed, right? No. Okay, but we are using mud mitigation. We're using ARPA for mud mitigation, the 37.5? No. The, the mud mitigation originally was proposed at like 75 or 76,000. Yeah. Yeah. We decided that because it wasn't a, a previously budget item, budgeted item, okay. we felt comfortable moving that back to half. Okay. Um, we The road gravel started out at 100. We decided to pull it back to 80. Yep. And then we... That we agreed that we would fund 50 of the 80 with the ARPA. Right. But what's the other 30 for the ARPA? I'd... Let's go back to the minutes and see if it says something here. Was it something to do with, no, wasn't to do well, with the Well, are you sure it wasn't was mud it? mitigation? It doesn't say. Oh, it said Liz suggested using ARPA funds for mud mitigation, but that doesn't mean for, that was just for the 37.5, but that's not it. Okay. Um, I, I just thought we agreed to pull that back to half, understanding yeah. that it may not be, you know, it was, it was something that we never budgeted for before. Yep. And that $76,000 number came from this last year. Right. From money spent. Right. So it doesn't say anything about 80,000 in ARPA funds. All we know is that. So the 50. The 50 is for ARPA um, for um, gravel. And that's not. We didn't make any bigger cuts to the road and said we were going to cover it with ARPA. Do we see anything that's big I, here? I, I kind of remember you guys talking about using money for ARPA money for the salt shed. Yeah, well, I think I think the discussion, if I remember it correctly, was that if we couldn't straddle the two budget years, oh, okay. Okay, so then maybe ARPA that's could come 30. in with the additional thirty thousand. Okay, okay, so we're going to say half the salt shed in fiscal year twenty three twenty four, which is the thirty thousand. The second half of the salt shed will either be fiscal year twenty four twenty five, or ARPA, or thirty k in ARPA. Okay. So we're not doing anything else to the salt shed this year. Okay. Okay. Just the tar. Does that does that make sense, Sarah? So so just to be clear, you're going to do half the salt shed uh, for twenty three twenty four. You're going to budget thirty thousand dollars for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then twenty four twenty five cross that bridge when you come to it. Uh, the plan is is that we would budget the thirty thousand dollars in next year's budget for that okay. or the following year for that, and if for some reason. We can't straddle the two, yeah. and we have to do it. Then yeah. that's the ARPA piece. Because you have to have that ARPA money designated by the end of 2024, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So if you can't do it, then you do it. Okay. Mark, do you have any questions about that now? Nope. All set. Thanks. Peter. All set. Okay. Is there any more discussion about the town budget? Where did you come up with a 10 percent? Oh, it's at the four at the bottom. 10.24 percent. It's right here. Line 280. And we're not voting on this 50K because that's a special article, but in effect, if it passed, the budget would actually be 13.56. Thank you. So we're voting on a 10.24 percent budget. Oh, yeah. um, is it the 153? No, no. 101, 657, 287. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 1,657,287. Yeah. Okay. About half my taxes. Is there any more discussion about the budget? 
Hearing no discussion, is there anyone who would like to make a motion? I will make the motion. I don't very often get a chance to make motions. So here you go. I'll make the motion that we approve the budget. Uh, the number that Dorinda just said, 1,657,287, which is a 10.24% increase. Is there a second? I'll second it. Dick seconds it. All those in favor of approving said motion, say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? The ayes have it. And the budget has passed. Good work, everyone. Okay, so now it is 515. We're a little ahead of schedule, but Sarah, this is considering increased fees for DRB appeals from 105 per appeal to 150 per appeal plus $10 a butter per a butter mailing. Action okay. possible. I'm going to draw. Thank All you right, thank you, thank you, Mark. Thank you, thank you for your work. Thanks. For your yeah. work. So, uh, with the cost of, the cost of mailings and the cost of advertising for um, in the Times Argus, and the cost of, or of Kevin's time and my time in these appeals, we decided that we needed to, to we're not covering our town's costs. Okay. We're based, other taxpayers are supplementing people. So we, we worked it out, and Kevin looked at other towns and saw what would they do. And a lot of times, if you get, we're gonna have a case with like something like 30 of butters, and that's like, that's 30 certified mailings and 30 regular mail, that's a lot of money and a lot of my time. So that's why mm -hmm. we decided to break it down for individual mailings. So if somebody has three abutting neighbors, they shouldn't be charged the same. So okay. 150 for the appeal, and then we extra for the mail. And this would start when? Well, I would like to be able to put it in the town report. This is why I would like to bring it up now. So I would like to have it as you know as soon as possible. Maybe let's call it February first. Yeah. Could you repeat what you said about if you had three or when they I'm had thirty? Some people have a lot of abutting neighbors, and some yeah, people we, only have two we, or three. We have one of those right now. Right. So the person is going to right. That's coming up. But with some persons, it's 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 can be hugely expensive. I mean, it's cost close to eight dollars for a certified letter and it's also a lot of time on my part and then it's another you know almost 60 cents for a regular letter by the time you're getting up there somebody who has an appeal with 30 neighbors shouldn't have to pay the same as the someone who has an appeal with three neighbors so that's why we're breaking up breaking out the mailings right now we just charge a lump sum like whatever 100 mm. and so we're not we're not reflecting that so the person who's doing the appeal is going to pay also for the mailing. Yes. Okay. Theoretically, the person who, who the the appellant should be doing all of this, sending out all the the notices and running the ad in the paper. But because the town is, lit, is uh, could be sued if we do it incorrectly, we take on that responsibility. Gotcha. Really? So does the ten dollars covers our cost? <laughs> the ten dollars for the mailing? Yeah, the ten dollars for the mailing covers our cost, just a little bit more, plus. You know, we're going to, the appeal, the $150 appeal takes into account, you know, me designing the ad, Kevin putting together the abutters, us, me stopping the envelopes, him paying attention, like going through the permits and appeal and going to the DRB and presenting the town's case. So we figure that that everything is covered. Okay. Okay. Any questions for Sarah? Peter, do you have any comments about that? No, I don't. I think it's fine. I, I think we should, uh, you know, we don't need, we're not obviously not going to do it tonight, but I think we should review all our fees in light of increased mailing costs and everything else Sarah has discussed. Um, I like, I like modest bumps, not big bumps. So keeping them in line is a good thing. So do you want to set a date of like that this is effective, like for our applications? starting February 1st or whatever? I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think? I make I'm fine with it. I think, make I think make it effective after town meeting. OK. How about we just make it effective uh, March, March 7th or whatever? March 1st, whatever. So, yeah, March 1st, March 7th. That sounds yeah. fair. That way we don't look like we're picking on one particular appellant. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And March 7th is the town day for town meeting, right? Yeah. yeah. OK, so does someone want to make a motion? Does anybody, uh, I have one more question. Sure. Sarah, do you know what percentage of uh, uh, 
applications go to the design review board? It's development review board. Development review board. Sorry. Um, we, you know, it can be a hit or miss year. It seems like recently we're getting a lot more of uh, as people live closer to each other and they need waivers. Phil knows that for things like, you know, I want to put a shed here, my neighbor doesn't mind, can I have a waiver? That has to go to the DRB. But we're also going to get subdivisions, coming major subdivisions. That's going to be in the town's future. And those are handled by the DRB. They used to be handled by this planning commission, but now they're handled by the DRB. So those will auto, that also falls into this, this appeal. So maybe just to make clear that any, any, any matter before the DRB should be that's, that requires notification, those are the fees. No, we'll just keep it as a field. That's fine. Anyway, I don't know. It's hard to fit. Yeah. Yeah. But are there other fees for the DRB besides appeals? Well, if somebody has a, if somebody has a major subdivision, they're going to have to go to before the DRB. That hasn't happened yet so far. Do no, we want to change the word to something? No, because we it could be a different price altogether for something like that. Right. Let's just do Okay, let's just do this. Okay. We'll do subdivision. Okay. You, you say major? Yeah. Is that the same thing as saying a large or small? It's more than two lots. So there's a minor subdivision that Kevin can handle, and then there are major subdivisions. Used to have to go before the Planning Commission, now go before the DRP. Yeah. Okay. So he can handle one and two lot yeah. subdivisions, he and then all the time. three and up yeah. has to go to the board. Correct. Okay. And it depends if there's also a time frame. So if they apply for like their third within a certain time frame, that becomes a major really subdivision and it happened in our neighborhood. So can, it's changed okay. things because they apply. If you're going to ask me more zoning questions, year. I'm not sure I can answer them. I mean, I no, I was just wondering, every, every uh, request for, I guess everything's a subdivision, whether you're breaking up a piece of land or you're just buying a piece of land, is that correct? No. No? Mm -hmm. If you have your gigantic estate and you want to make it into five lots, that's a major subdivision. That's going to have to go before the DRB. If I want to take off half my lot, half my lot and sell it to, you know, somebody who wants to buy a lot, that's a minor subdivision. But if I want to do it again, then I think you're in major subdivision territory. And that's where it gets tricky. I'm not going anywhere near there. Yeah. What's the, do you know the top, what's the time frame between the two, do you know? Oh, I'm not the zoning administrator. Yeah, right. But there is a time frame. There is a time frame, yeah, because yeah, we, we encountered it when somebody was, do, they kept doing it over and over, and we're like, wait a minute. Yeah, it becomes a major And it becomes subdivision, a major right. subdivision because it was in, I think it was a 12 month period, I don't remember, or a two year period, but it was, yeah, they, wait, they ended up waiting until the time frame was up and then they got it and then became a mi it became a minor again. And then there's an active 50 stuff, so. I yeah, yeah, it gets complicated. Are there any more questions about this particular agenda item? <coughs> okay, is there a motion? Yeah, I'll yeah. make that motion. Okay. okay. I'll see. Randy made it? Yeah. 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 And Phil seconded. And Phil seconded. Yeah. Okay, all those in favor of increasing the DRB um, appeal fees from 105 per appeal to 150 per appeal plus $10 a better mailing beginning March 7th. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. And this has passed. Congratulations, Sarah. Okay. Oh, and we are five minutes ahead of schedule, but are you guys okay for starting the Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department or do you have people joining at 5.30 on Zoom? No, we Okay, so we have with us two very special guests from the Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department. Um, so why don't you guys take and it away? You also have Scott Isham who's in the fire department. He's chiming in from Zoom. Okay, I don't see him on there. Oh, his name's on there. Oh, it is. Yep. Oh, and Shelly. Oh, yeah. Yep. Sorry, Shelly's okay. on there too you, as a guest. Oh. Hi, Scott. How are you? Welcome. Thank you. Okay. So, for um, this meeting, being it's the first one in January, and we go from third week to third week, it's a split between December and January for our runs. During the time period, we had a. Um, total of nine calls um, 
minor error there. I'll go over with you, Sarah. Just they, they, they also have copies of your report. Just that we have right here. Okay. So the calls over last month, they go ahead and cross that out. Um, mutual aid out, we had no outs. We had one in, and that was purely as a precautionary because the alarm system at Rumney went off right after the power came back on. So instead of waiting till we get there to find out, we started rolling Worcester just in case. Um, and I'll get into that call in just a minute. Uh, max number at a call were eight, min was two, and that was for a tree on a power line. Our average response was 4.89, which is up from last quarter, which was one our fourth quarter. And the six was out six, uh, engine one was out six times, and the six out zero times, tanker one, two times, um, rescue one, five times, truck 14, zero. As far as the calls, we had uh, car versus deer on 89. We had a um, tree on over Route 12 on a power line by Wrightsville Dam. Upper Sunnybrook, tree down, same day. Uh, Rumney School, so what happened with that is the power was out over there for five days. They have a, a two tier system in the school. There's a wet system for the sprinklers and there's a dry system. So the dry system is up in the attic where there's no heat. And what happens if when a sprinkler head opens, the pressure drops, it fills with water, and then it sprays out, and that's how that works. The way that that keeps um, pressure in the line is there's a, an air pump that needs power to run. Their um, generator that they have to go on, in such cases as a power outage, was down for like three months waiting on parts. And the part finally came in the Tuesday the power came on, they were going to come Wednesday to fix it. So there had been no air going into the system. So when the power came back on, the system worked like it's supposed to. The, the sensor said, oh, there's no air, so I'll send water. So when that happens, we get notified that there's air flowing in the dry system. So we get the call that it's from the school. The sprinkler's going off. There's a certain pucker factor with that. Um, so I beat feet right to the school. And lights are on all over the place. Nothing red is burning. Uh, so it's like tone people back and then we found out that it was purely it didn't have pressure it took like um, most of the next day for them to finally to get it seat or to, for it to seat properly so close that um, dry system off but the the they did have an alarm working alarm system uh, they did have a wet system if there was a fire so they did have fire coverage in the building it was just the dry system up in the attic over the the Gematuria uh, that had the, the issue. Um, but that was a lot of work at coordinating with the sprinkler company, the alarm company, you or the, the uh, school district uh, to get that thing resolved. Moving right along, we had a vehicle in a ditch. Uh, VSP canceled us on that one. We had on New Year's Day, we had a vehicle in the median and the rocks right before Waterbury, um, just over a hill and a curve, so that was a dangerous area. Um, we had, same day, we later that evening, we had a uh, two vehicle accident right up here at center in Route 2. Uh, no injuries with that one. Um, so on January 10th, when the consolidated communications um, alarm went off, now for your interest if you don't know this their address is a route to address not welsh park drive um, so what happened is we were getting our sprinkler system inspected which turns on the pump that's in that big pump house by the pond there well that pump operates this fire suppression system for consolidated and for us and i don't know if it works for um, the farm to table place as well. We didn't get a call that their alarm was going off, but it set off the alarm system in consolidated. I was already on scene, so I could cancel everybody from going because I knew what the problem was. Uh, so now we're going to coordinate with consolidated to test our alarm simultaneously so we don't have that problem again. But we didn't know that that worked that way. Uh, and then Culver Hill, there was a, um, a vehicle rollover, got, it was a Subaru all wheel drive, got well off the road. Um, all-wheel drive, get you further off the road. Um, nobody was hurt on that one. 
Uh, as far as training, we did um, an emergency vehicle scene slash road closure. So especially up on the interstate, how we want to isolate the scene to protect everybody in the ambulance, uh, how we want to place the vehicles. And we place them such that if people aren't paying attention, which is a lot, they'll hit a large truck and bounce off, maybe move the truck some, but not hit people further down in the shadow of that truck. Um, that's how we protect, because people are just oblivious to what's going on. Um, so we went over on how to cone it, sign it, pr placing vehicles. Uh, repairs, I won't say any more than that. <laughs> it's on the sheet. Um, upcoming purchases, we, we're replacing an AED. Uh, we had one that uh, died and talking with Zoll, the age of it, there was going to be a cost and just for them to look at it, whether they could fix it or not. And then if it could fix, it may not even be worth, worth it. So we just said, screw it, we'll get it. Uh, a little over $1,700 for the new one with both adult and PD pads. Um, so it's actually a step up from what we currently have. It's a newer iteration. As far as fast squads, uh, busy time there, 15 total during the reporting time, 10 medical only calls, and five in conjunction with accident calls. So, um, and when, the when you say not, responders, do you mean people from our team, or do you mean just yeah, our, from, our, from our department? Those so numbers are based on our okay, just our people. Okay, yep. cool. So we're we're inching up yeah. on the number of responses, even though that that we had a two only two one one response. It was just a the tree on a power line on Route 12. Yeah. That's, you don't need a whole lot of people to, to deal with that. Vic, did you have a uh, question? Yeah. Um, the other day, uh, the fire department did get toned out for, I didn't get a sheet on it yet for uh, manpower for a medical call. That was, it doesn't count as a call. You talking okay. about the list? Yes. It doesn't count as a call. Okay. Vic. Um, I was listening to your uh, what you said about at an accident scene uh, setting up mm -hmm. vehicles for so the people are safe. The, the responders that are working the scene, correct. So I just in my head, you know, just it, do you guys ever was there ever any thought given to an attenuator that could be part of your what do you mean? Trucks. What are you talking about, an attenuator? Attenuator? Oh. That's like the, the, when you're going down, like when you have a, if you've ever seen, like when you have a, a project on the interstate, for example, is the best example, best thing I can think of. It's a truck with a shock absorber mounted okay. to it. Uh, no, because that's a, number one, that's a, that's a AOT thing and that's a very special use item and even with right, those right oh right we, we've it is. we've been to we were to a, a really nasty scene where they had one of those they were painting lines and uh, um, uh, an econo van with six people in it slammed into that <laughs> and there was the driver of that was injured that scene was an absolute mess we're not on scene long enough really to have and and have it, a lot of times if it looks like it's going to be a long time or it's in a blind area like it was on, on New Year's Day, we'll bring the tanker out, which has got 2,000 pounds of water in it. So if it does it, even with the signage, and people on there, they're oblivious to whatever, be it they're looking at their cell phone, they're talking to their passenger, they're just oblivious, um, they'll hit that. Having a, a truck that only does that, to me, is not a, a why spend of our fire department funds for when we are talking about it. cost more, the fire engine or the attenuator? Well, the, the fire truck will, but we've got to find, we would have to find some place to put it, and it would only get, uh, the number of accidents on the interstate versus in the town are, are it's, the ratio is going more in town than, than on the interstate. So that's a, just that truck alone is probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $100,000. Yeah. 
um, that's we could spend that a lot more wisely on getting a new rescue. Okay. And the tanker that we have is worth considerably less than, than that, right? The the tanker we have, we paid one hundred seventeen thousand for it. Okay. Uh, to and and had we gotten gone with a company other than VTEC, we would have been paying one hundred eighty two or one hundred eighty four thousand. Oh, it's just a thought. I'm not challenging. It, yeah, it's just, I'm not challenging the fire department on that. It, it's that's a very specialized thing to have for the department to have on the occasions that we're in a place that VSP isn't blocking because cars pay attention to blue lights not so much red lights and on a straightaway VSP is seen well ahead so that would be used in the number of I would say less than a dozen probably less than a dozen times during the year if that many um, it just we're on the on the interstate so relatively a short time that like getting that all set up takes time it's like getting a sign package from AOT to close close down the line it's a minimum of four hours to get them to get a sign package out and that's when they're at work uh, so okay Peter has a question Peter you're on mute you're on mute you're muted Pete. Uh, here I am. Thank you. Um, Jeff, I had a question when you talked about the alarm situation with regard to the fire pond. Yeah. So my understanding is that we have no connection to that fire pond. That there is a, I guess there is a dry hydrant. Is there a dry hydrant in the fire pond that comes down the hill? So the, the, the pond feeds our fire suppression system, our sprinklers. So when it when he tested it and opened up the the valve to blow water out, it kicked off the pump in the pump house, and that's that's how that's what charges our sprinkler system is coming from the pond through that pump, <coughs> and um, but it, that's the only thing we don't have the uh, outlet that we have underneath the stairs going up to the mezzanine is just a gravity feed from the pond. We do have a dry hydrant where we have a little shack built uh, that we can either draft and fill our vehicles or we can hook up to a pumper and feed the, the other dry hydrants coming up the road. Got it. I never knew that we were connected to that fire pump in any way, manner, shape or form. Neither did we. And I don't think, yeah. So there, there is an actual line running from that fire pump down to our fire station? Apparently so, because that's where he got the water from. Oh. We need to, I mean, we are, we are right now in the, in the throes of negotiating, hopefully negotiating a dissolution of Welch Park. And our assumption and the engineering reports and everything else make no mention of any connection to our fire department. And I've never heard of it. So well, that's obviously an issue. If we're part of that, if we're part of that fire pump, that that changes everything. So so yeah, and I don't uh, know if it's just the two of us, or if if the the farm building has it as well. Like I said, they never called that they had an alarm. So my guess they may not even be sprinkled, so it wouldn't be an issue with them. Um, and it just so happened that they actually had people at the facility at Consolidated they're doing classes that day. Normally, they don't have any staff in the building, but it was a quirk that they, a fluke that they were actually had people there. Okay, well, we've got, we've got some homework to do um, because the, uh, the terms of this dissolution agreement as, as presently drafted are consolidated. It's gonna be 100% responsible for that fire pump and the pond. So if in fact we really are connected to it, that changes the whole picture. So anyway, that's a big deal. Well, we're definitely connected when we hook into the, the dry hydrant side that we draw from to either fill our trucks or if we had a, to send water to be able to go across to, to, to the archives. That's oh, no, I, understand. I understand the business. I understand the dry hydrant and I understand the hydrants running along the road. Um, I just was not aware that we were connected to the fire pump. Yeah, that's, that's really weird. I mean, all, all these years, 
And I've spent hours and hours there staring at that fire pump with various people over, over time. And nobody has ever said that our fire station was connected to that. Well, we built a fire station from the ground up. Somehow it got connected. There must be somebody, something in the knows. there must be something in the drawings of our fire department that show a connection. Well, you would think. So. I mean, we just need to get to the bottom of it. It, it is important because, you know, yeah, it's important. You do remember? I do remember. Oh, God. I said something. He was there when he built it. Dorinda's going to investigate. Well, I'll look in our paperwork downstairs, but I kind of remember something about it. And I thought we owned that land too. That was one of our lots of land. And Maybe I'm going to pull deed. that out. Maybe there's a deed that we have a life. That that's we have three lots allocated to the town, and I believe that's one of them. Welch Park is one of them, and um, where the fire station sits is one of them. And I think they're on our our deeds. The fire pond is. I think no. so. Well, yeah. all I can I'll... all I can tell you is John Riley's digging into it right now. So. Uh, uh -huh. We've got we've got some work to do, but if you could look through that paperwork, Dorinda, that would be that would be helpful. So yes. the consequences the consequences of us disconnecting from that fire pump, we'd have to create our own system to activate our sprinkler system, right? Yes. Yes. That would be expensive. Okay. Thank you. I have a question before we move off the fire department. Do you guys? Do you guys track uh, just average re response time or anything like that? Is that possible to add to this? I know it's probably got a lot of variability and types of calls and stuff like that, but if it's something you were tracking, it was just something I was wondering about sitting here. So no, we don't. We, I don't keep a track of that, and and it really, it, I mean, it's where the, how many people are at home, where the call is. I mean, if you we get a call on the Rumney side. I'm going to engine six if it, if it warrants engine six going. It's going to take 20 minutes from here mm -hmm. to get over there. Oh, ab it, absolutely. So, so <laughs> that t for our we determine that's not something that that we we can make any improvements on because you've got weather there's roads. All those I mean, there's there's so many different things. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not looking for improvement or anything like that. I was just curious as to you know. On average, you know how long it took us to actually get somewhere to, you know, with in the existing state of of the department and how it how it operates. You know, if we if we track that, and if you don't, then that's fair. Um, if you did, I'd be interested in the yeah, we, in the data. We don't. Dorinda, uh, I know this came up years ago before I was treasurer, but. Um, I would like to see what your thoughts are about billing people for um, not so much residents, but highway calls and things like that. So that Sarah can answer to that. Yeah, legislation, the, the, this legislative body passed that ability to, to bill those calls. To bill them. Yeah. Right. But I don't, I, I can't so, I don't have any... So, so we have had almost when when Sarah was doing it, there was almost zero success with that because insurance companies say that's part, that's your job is to be out on the interstate and deal with accidents. Well, I know other towns they build like that, and it's and I and I can't name them, but I've seen where they have. They, sent they may send a bill. I'd be really interested to see how successful they are in getting it back. Only one bill, I remember one, only one company paid us, and that was Travelers Insurance. Berlin tried it, and they got they were no success. Mm -hmm. um, do people give you donations, So after someone's come to your house? Some people do. Yeah. Some don't. I'm not Obviously, the interstate crowd doesn't. No, right. I'm not so much interested in our residents, because I think that's what they're paying for with their taxes. <clears throat> um, but I do think that with the cost of our stipends going up and all of that, you know, and somebody driving DUI, they're costing us money, um, and that's where I think that, and if it's a matter of you guys having the ability to do the billing or something, that maybe it's something we could take on within the, our department or? The, the other, 
the other thing I see a potential of is if we're only billing people on the interstate and out of state, there's going to be some smart lawyer who's going to say, hey, you're not billing anybody else in the town. Well, we're they're paying their taxes or covering them. But you know how lawyers are. It's why you can't, there isn't a Vermonter day at Stowe anymore because it has to be, it's on federal land, you have to do it. So this is our part of the highway to monitor. That's the way, so I'm not saying a lawyer will do that, but I've seen some crazier things that lawyers will bring up. And to me, that's one of them that we're not fairly charging other people for it. And, and fire services don't tend not to charge for calls because that's part of fire service. Ambulance, whole different story, but not with the fire departments. Not the fire. Peter. So I remember very well because I was the one who pushed for that, for that billing years ago because it just drove me crazy that we were paying for all these, all these calls up on the interstate and then, you know, the whole, the whole bit. And it helped me out, Sarah, but I believe at the time there was a big, there was a big hullabaloo and there was a, a bill put forth in the legislature to allow for billing and it never went anywhere. And uh, the bills we sent out, the insurance companies resisted like crazy. I called, I called a number of them uh, myself at the time and talked to them in insurance speak and everything else I could, I could think of. And they just said, no way, we're not, we're not going to do it. And, you know, you can, you can sue us for your $750 or $1,000 or whatever it was that we were trying to collect. So, you know, if, if, if in fact the world has changed and towns are successfully billing insurance uh, companies, I'd love to hear about it. But I don't believe that's the case. I mean, the last I knew, which was a couple of years ago, insurance companies were still resisting it like crazy. Sir. I thought he was going to ask me. No, well, no. If you, in fact, if you in fact know Dorinda of towns that are successfully doing this, I mean, you could reach out to them. I'm happy to reach out to them. I'd like to know, you know, how they're doing and what they're billing for, et cetera. I just know it came up at the treasurer's meeting. Um, it was something they were talking about, you know, income and things like that, and that they did bill out. I can't remember what towns it were. Um, but they were at the treasurer's meeting. Yeah, I'd be really interested. I mean, I'm sure there are, there are some that are billing out. But they, what their ratio of collection is probably different. And the, the time spent versus what they're getting back. Okay, is there any more, to keep us on the agenda, are there any more questions or comments for the Middlesex I volunteer fire department? I do have one thing from the fire department. Yes. I received a letter from the capital fire mutual aid system remember we uh, wrote a letter of intent for them to get a grant to update their their uh, towers and all that so they've received their first phase of grant money which is 2.44 million dollars and they're working on their phase two which would be a 1.1 million so they're just letting us know that so far so good. Oh, good. And they're moving forward. And remind me what it's for. It's for upgrading what, like their uh, tower? The tower. Yeah. The tower. Yeah. Nice. And okay. it's Capital Fire Mutual Aid. Is that what it is? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there anything that we need to that, uh, that tied sign in, on to? That right? tied into that 10 year plan, right? right. For the $3,000 a year. Yep. Right. Nice. Yep. Plus Middlesex's yep. uh, allotment for that. And I have this if you guys would like to read it. But that was just the gist of Great. Sarah. Eric, can you use Yep. I would right. love to give you So that's something to take into consideration. Yeah. Yeah. Have to fund. No, 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 you still have to fund it. Oh, you still have to fund it? Yeah, so they're, um, they were seeking all of this all of this as a fundraising effort. And even um, if they got that, those allocations by town, so I think ours was just south of three thousand dollars a year for the next ten years. Right, mm, that's right. It's a, probably a matching. And yeah, it included <laughs> that fundraising. Oh, it included that. Yes. Okay. Is that in the fire department budget? That it's three thousand. Where we, is it? We had talked about putting it in the CIP um, for a while, but then we it, we hadn't. We talked about it, and nobody had heard anything right. back on it. So oh, so we haven't we actually ever paid for a letter or no, something. No, it hasn't started it. yet. Right, because, but just yeah, okay. we got it. So 
we had a discussion with them, uh, I don't know, months ago. Yeah. They, they came to one like of the meetings and. September, October, September. something. Yeah. 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 Okay. I might have not been at that meeting. Okay. Any other comments for the fire department? Thank you, Ooh, gentlemen, for coming and for your nice report. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So it is 545, and Eric's still here, and Vic is here for the highway report. Mm -hmm. Who what would like to say? Uh, where do I begin? Right. No, uh, we're looking good. Uh, the only issue I've come across is the uh, chipper. Uh, I pulled the chipper in the shop the other day, well, two weeks ago now, to uh, use it and decided I better check it out before we do, and it's a good thing I did because the oil is contaminated with coolant. So what? I don't believe the motor is any good. What? Motor is dead. Yeah. Does it Do you get a replacement, or do you have to replace the entire chip? I am looking into uh, the best option right at the moment. What would you think is a ballpark price of? Well, I tens found, of thousands, or I've seen. Well, I've seen. I saw some engines online that are used mm -hmm. for six to ten thousand dollars. Used engines. So. It was my understanding that there's been lots of discussion about this chipper and whether or not it met today's safety standards and whether or not we could actually even push forward with continued use of this. Is, am I out of line by saying? Uh, you're right, you're right. Uh, and, but I think they did go to, uh, what was the gentleman's name right there? Just up the road, is it? Just the Shady Railroad hey, Garage. Yes, Gabe. Yes. Yeah, Lois. supposedly he got it into so that it would comply with, with OSHA. OSHA, OSHA, okay. OSHA. It is a 1989, if anybody. Yes. How did you use it? Uh, well, I I don't know if they'd used it since they got it fixed up, but I was going to use it and can so. We haven't used it since they did McCullough High, McCullough Highway. Which is like <laughs> yeah, when they difference. when they made that section uh, class three, right? That's no, the last time. That well, they, the whole no, road. They remember yeah, they did the whole. They did road the whole road with it. Yeah. Okay. How much does it cost to rent something like that, or did they not? Are they not available? Well, no, on that? you can yeah. rent them. It's several hundred dollars a day. I don't know how to chip. But anyway, so I'll I will okay. try to get some information together. But that's that's the only hurdle I've come up against. When you when you look at repair costs and all that kind of stuff, Eric, can you put some thought into like how often you think realistically we need? To use that like how many days out of the summer do you think that we might actually do it just so we can compare like oh, absolutely you know the the repair cost versus you know uh what rental on an annual basis might look like mm -hmm. yep. it's just like everything is real handy if you have one if you right. have a tree down or you want to you mm -hmm. have a you know, like this winter has been an excellent time to uh, with no snow you could go do uh Right. Different areas, if you wanted to. Yep. And how? What's the capacity of that chipper? How that was twelve inch. Twelve inch. Was that like a seventy? Probably eighty thousand dollars. Wow. For a new. Reason. So there's a place down in. Uh, down by Bethel. Stockbridge, I think. Stockbridge. Yeah. Where they sell them, and I've seen some advertised. They're refurbished for. Anywhere from twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Darn, those things are expensive. Um, Other than that, uh, that everything seems to be okay. <laughs> Anything else about the road? So it's to be there. Yeah, this never ends. No. Uh, so no. we're just quickly before I forget. I I need to. Uh, Leave town for an appointment at 11 tomorrow morning. So if there's any chance you guys could buzz over in the morning, yep. that would be great. I'm I'm loaning the town my Honda generator. So we have a generator at the town garage to uh, open the garage doors and pump fuel. Yeah, uh, we should be able to. I unfortunately wasn't able to make it today, but yeah, we'll do it. No, that's fine. It's not, it's not an emergency. I just, yep. uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Before 11, okay. Could be emergency. Yep. It could be. Do you have anything you want to add about the roads? 
um, highway report. Eric has and the crew have been uh, doing some mud mitigation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, we have. Yes. That we don't usually do this time of year. We're using material out of our own uh, pit so that we stockpiled over there this fall. Some of like tailings and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, just the, the clean yeah. inch and a half stone. Now, Peter had mentioned earlier that East Hill was, or over by his house was at Muddy. Oh, and yeah. is it the actual frozen ruts you're dealing with, or with, when it was warmer Both. and it was frozen? It was mm -hmm. everything. Okay, yeah. All right. I know there's a lot this of part of East Hill where you go up over the hill from my house and down the other side. The sun bakes on that, so that's the first part that always broke up. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, thus our big budget for gravel mm -hmm. next year. Mm -hmm. Easy enough to explain. All right. Anyone else want to? Do you have any comments, uh, Peter, about the highway, or have any questions? No, I just think it's, uh, you know, Victor said this would be a great time to cut brush if we had a chipper, but we don't, so. Okay. We'll figure it out. We'll figure yeah. it out. Way. There's uh, other so is Dave Lewis still in that business? Does anybody know? I, I was actually going to stop and talk to him, but I just haven't had the ability to do yeah. that. Because he had a pretty good handle on what the market was and knew. Oh, on Shady well, maybe, Abe. maybe he might know of, hmm? of a place to get parts Abe for Abe on Shady Bell. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. His wife used to work at Romney. What was her name? His wife? Yeah. Um, Andy. That's right. I really liked her. Okay. So um, if there's nothing more about the highway report, we'll move to our 6 o'clock. Um, agenda item which is the 2023 town meeting preparation reviewing a draft of the warning which Sarah has given us this nice big giant 11 by 20 or whatever it is and um, discussion about pending legislation permitting floor vote towns to again hold town meeting via Australia ballot preliminary review of the 2022 select board report action unlikely Okay, so Sarah gave us a copy of the warning. Do you have a copy of it, Peter? It's that you would have had a, a big thing of I it. Do. Thank you. Okay, and um, yeah, why don't you go ahead, Sarah, if you want to so share just with want us? To explain what, what's in yellow and what's in blue. Yeah, we can fill. And as you get to Article Six, we can fill that in with the uh, budget number you guys voted tonight. Mm -hmm. um, the other. Two, I looked at the Article 7 happened and Article 8. Dorinda had a really good idea. These are the, this is the creation of the fund, reserve fund, and also uh, how to fund the reserve fund at, to the after if the voters approve it. And I looked, VLCT had a really clear template and I just used the wording for that. You have to give the fund a name and you have to say what it's for. And Dorinda just came up with a great idea, which is to call it the asset slash Asset slash, slash equipment, equipment fund. fund. Yes. So assets could be yes. a lot. So right. rather than yeah, vehicle middle, and heavy equipment, yeah, you would right. call it the asset, asset slash. Yeah, middle sex asset, asset slash equipment fund. I put it into the, Okay, right. yeah, okay. And then we just need a description of it. Um, equipment fund. And to adopt an asset, uh, Oh no, I'm sorry. That's I'm sorry. That's, forget that. That's Article Seven is the land use regulations. That that's that's, that's pretty standard wording. I'm just looking at Article Eight and Article Nine. So asset equipment fund. And we have to use a get a description. I said and to be used for to fund future purchases. What do you guys want to say of assets and equipment? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, um, I would do it of uh, vehicles and. Um, because assets could be anything. Capital assets, assets, assets vehicles, vehicles, heavy equipment. Yep. Yeah. And uh, you might want to even say something like, does our capital asset um, plan say what our capital assets, do we have that in there, like as defined in our capital asset plan, which is- Well, it talks about money threshold. Yeah, and, and it has some financial thresholds that are captured within there, like it's gotta be more than $5,000. And there's yeah. there's a bunch of different defining stuff there that, that we don't talks to about no, what it yeah. fits, but- We just want to keep it really simple. So, um, so just see, so town establish a reserve fund to be called the asset, equip, asset slash equipment fund um, to fund town future, future purchases, purchases of, of town, town vehicles, vehicles, and equipment, yeah. vehicles, 
and it equipment. Yeah, I That's mean equipment could have, be probably heavy yeah, equipment. But, it, that, well, but if we want to fund a server or something, yeah, that's what I mean. So, if you want to fund a server, yeah. You could say capital assets as defined in our capital spending plan. I actually, mm. I actually like that. Okay. And our capital because spending plan. That's can, really what. That's really what it is. And if it somebody is. wants to know what that is, we need to be ready to tell them. But. Okay. So fun. Well, I mean, essentially, you've got you've got the documentation for it. You've got the the application process defined already. So it would have to it would have to go through that to be included in that right. in that fund. So anything right. that was outside of that and didn't go through the capital improvement process, application and, and scoring sheet and everything else wouldn't be applicable to be funded through this fund. So shall the town establish a reserve fund to be called the asset slash equipment fund to be used to fund assets as defined by the cap in the capital improvement plan? Future purchases of future yeah. purchases of assets. Yeah. Future purchases of assets. Do we want to do anything that like such as? No, I would really no. keep no. it simple. I think you. No. Want, I don't think you want to pigeonhole. You want to put that? Yeah. Okay. You know, there'll be discussions at town meeting. We probably. I mean, should. it's not like we're going to go out and buy, you know, I don't know, a swimming pool, but it's. Uh, <laughs> well, and this could also be explained, Phil, in the in yeah. the budget explanation True. that um, you know uh, we have, or are we going to have any explanation we, about uh, any of this <laughs> before oh, town I think meeting? That somebody needs to write something about the capital improvement plan. Yeah, and I don't know who that is. It's not me. Oh, it really? might be come from the budget committee. I would think so. I would think if that's who's charged, if that's yeah. who's charged, so, uh, ask Mark so we should yeah, yeah. we can connect with Mark and we have a meeting on the twenty fourth. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, twenty the twenty fourth. So just ask him to add it to that agenda and we well, can, it would be good. I mean, I'm I'm just running. I'm bumping up against a deadline on the town report. Okay, so if there's a defined deadline that you need to meet, then we need to specify it. That's all. Right. Um, yeah. So the twenty fourth is Tuesday. And uh, that would be good. It would be really great if you guys could review it, like somebody could draft it and review it at the 24th meeting yeah. and then give it to me on the 25th. So will you send him an email yep. asking? I'm going to do it right now. And then we'll put it on the agenda to review on that? Yep, perfect. Okay. And then you guys have uh, Article 9 is to some of blah, blah, blah. I also took this from the VLCT template. To fund the asset, asset. slash yeah. equipment. Do we want to call it the heavy equipment or just? I would, no. I would just name it the same exact thing that's in the budget here. Middlesex, the, the capital asset, Middlesex asset and equipment fund. Asset. Slash equipment fund. Yep. Okay. Great. And that's 50K, right? That yep. is. Yep. And then. Um, okay, that helps. And then the budget of 1657. 287. Okay. Um, and why are you highlighting Article 7? Because it's new? Yes. So that is the, those are the land use regulations. And uh, it's oddly enough, there doesn't seem, that's, that's the most, that's, that's just, that seems to be it. I don't think there's anything more that you guys want to, to include on that. And do you or? But hold on. Shall the town, oh, this is in, this, this, wait a minute. And why is the to be voted by Australian ballot? Oh, Article Seven. Because that's, be. because that's the citation. Those the that those land use regulations must be voted by Australian ballot okay. according to state statutes. That's why I put the state statute. But hold on, these are. I'm sorry, are these Article Eight and Nine? Are discussions? Eight new. It's no, all they're new. just new. They're these, things okay. like you these guys have. You've new. gone through. I mean, I think Dorinda has. Look, you've looked at the numbers and uh, the dates in Article uh, Four for the taxes, right? That yeah. looks good. I, I know, but so the yellow is new stuff. I I, I understand. I guess I'm really confused. Um, don't aren't these articles things that we're doing as a floor vote? Everything yes. except the land use regulations must be on the ballot. But isn't Article 9 going to be under special articles for yep. a vote? Yep. Mm -hmm. an, an Australian ballot vote? No. Mm -mm. That's going to be by the floor. the floor. Oh, it's going to be from the floor. Okay. 
The only thing that has to be by Australian ballot are town officers and the land use regulations. Okay, so Article 7 is going to be on our paper ballot. That's correct. But Article 9 is going to be a floor vote. 8 and 9. 8 and 9 are floor votes. you got to create 8. And if the, board, the voters say, yes, we'll create that fund, then you got to say, well, how much are you going to put into the fund? Gotcha. Okay. This is going to be a long meeting. I don't think so. Okay, good. We um, don't have any, we, so far, you don't have any Most long. of them are just repeats other than those three yellow ones. <laughs> you just hear They're people, this, cat, this reserve fund is going to take a while to talk about, I, I guarantee you, and everyone's going to be hungry. Okay, so, and then Article 11 and 15, we don't actually, and we're actually not even. Well, 11, 11 and 15, we won't know until 5 p.m. Thursday, because they haven't submitted any petitions. Okay, yep. Everybody else has submitted a petition. Gotcha. Okay, and then we don't yet know what this number is because we're still waiting for the petition. Okay. Uh, I think Article 17 is basically done, but I, I have, I have two, two I, I had a double thing. I, you have sexual assault crisis team, just draw a line through it because it's what Mosaic is now, so. Uh, so what number did you come up with, Brenda? Um, I didn't come up with Okay, that. we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out, but you don't have to approve that. That's no. just special articles. Because I, so. I just need you guys to go over this so that when you do vote on the warning, it'll, you, okay. we'll have it. So are there any questions from board members about this actual warning besides what we just discussed? So it is believed or expected that there's going to be no uh, legislation to allow not having a traditional town meeting, right? Incorrect. Incorrect, right. They are going to, and that legislation will definitely pass. Yeah. So okay. that's why I just wanted to get it, uh, it's creating complications for us who are trying to do the town reports and also trying to arrange ballots to be sent out. We just need, a, I just need something from the select board indicating which way you're gonna go. But isn't that the next item on the agenda? Yep. That's right, what so are part. we, so, Okay. This discussion about pending legislation permitting floor vote towns to again hold town meeting via yeah. Australian ballot. Yeah, Peter's just asking. That's what he's asking about. And you are saying that you believe that... The general consensus is the legislation will pass. And they'll say that, yes, you can hold town meeting via... Australian ballot like we have for the past two Because years. of COVID. Correct. Or something. It's going to be some sort of... Okay. Um, okay. So are we done with that? item the, the the legislation yeah besides going to the because we also have well, preliminary I mean, review of this select board report before we go to the next agenda item about the actual uh, my only concern is that you're going to have you need to have one more special we have to have one more meeting before you meet again in february by statute just to pass that warning so we're in the time yes so the question is if you want to discuss and make a decision about the legislation like whether or not you're going to hold town meeting in person or if you're going to hold town meeting by australian ballot you might as well just do it tonight if you're not ready to have that discussion we're going to have to have it at the special meeting so it's up to you but if we have it tonight it's at the next agenda item right okay i don't yeah i, guess I think so, so. It's yeah the next it's the next agenda yeah. item so let's finish this other agenda item first okay. all right which which um talks about the pending legislation, which it sounds like we've discussed that. Okay. So the next thing is looking at the select board report. Okay. So let's do that. I'll move. So we're not, and we're not approving the, uh, not, yet. not approving the warning tonight in any event, right? right. No. no. Yeah. Right. Did everyone get right. a chance to review the select board report and did they have any edits or? No. The only thing I wanted to edit, Sarah, was yes. that it, down at the bottom where it says Select Board Vice Chair Liz Sharp has been pivotal in applying for grants to pay for a feasibility study. Okay. I would say Select Board Vice Chair Liz Sharp and Planning Committed Commission Townsperson person. Sandy Levine. Right. Planning Commission Chair? Yeah, but she kind of is not doing it on that. She's okay. doing it as like a, All right. I would just, just say, and Sandy Levine, in Towns and, resident Sandy Levine, Sandy Levine. Okay. have been pivotal. All right. Because, and, and resident Dave McVita, that's great. I just want to make sure Sandy's mentioned. Okay, great. So I have and one quick, um, one quick change uh, where it says transitioning the MF, MVFD into a municipal department actually began with a devastating fire destroying the Middlesex United Methodist Church. I mean, to me, we've been talking about this for 
I don't know, eight years, 10 years, some long period of time. So did that maybe bring it to a head? Maybe, but I think we were well down the path of trying to do this before that. So I just like to change that language and say for a number of years, uh, this had been discussed, had been, a, had been a concern for the select board, something like that, rather than- we Kicked into high gear, we do that, kicked into gear after being discussed for a number of years. Well, see if there's any purpose in putting down about the Middlesex Church. Really? No. It is almost like, yeah. it's almost like wrong. Yeah, let's just, okay. Like it's not their, re I mean, yeah, they didn't have a great response, but let's not rub it in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like- Be positive. Yeah, it, yeah, because no, things, no, so many no, good no, things- No, 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 I want it to be, I want yeah. it to be positive. I just want to reflect that this has been an ongoing discussion yeah. for some period of time. After That's several all. years okay. of ongoing. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. Um, it finally came to fruition. Are you putting a picture of the town hall on the, um, I mean, the church on the cover? No, we had the church on the cover last year. Oh, did we it did. burn before then? Oh, it's 2021, yeah. yeah. Whoops. <laughs> it's been a while. We're, try, we're going to put okay. pictures of uh, bees oh. because of the, and the, the, the Dretches on Norton Road, their their honey was a worldwide winner, was like named best in the world. It's wow, actually I didn't extraordinarily know that. good. Its secret is Japanese knotweed. Oh dear God. Don't tell me they're planting Japanese knotweed. <laughs> but I mean they're internationally the famous and they won this big award. So we've got we're gonna have colorful pictures of Oh interesting. Yeah. That's so cool. I'd love to try their honey. And I have to yeah, I have to talk to Ada Alger. If I don't do it by tomorrow, I'm gonna kill myself. She's, she's turning 100. Also, um, we didn't receive exactly 500,000, did we? Wasn't it like four, eight? Or something? Yeah, was it? Yeah. Can we get that five, exact number? Yeah, I can get it for you. It was so five fifteen. Middlesex received five blank, blank, blank. Yeah. Okay. Well, you we'll might have to. Um, you probably can get it from Cheryl, but I don't okay. know if I've so got it on So just check that here. number. Yeah. Okay. Because it, it was an odd number. Okay. All right. Great. Very nice report, sir. Thank you. Well, um, I'll also, it. Yes. I would I would say um, the next paragraph where it says taking advantage of 100% matching grant, the, the board allocated $100,000 of these ARPA dollars because it's not clear where that 100000 okay. okay. came Great. from. Okay. And you could keep it in that same paragraph if you yep. wanted. I just wanted to break that out to a CV fiber paragraph, just like let people know. Yeah, that's fine. I get, a, I get a, more just questions say about dollars. CV fiber than I do. CV fiber and roads. Those are the number of... Really? Yeah. People are desperate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. And I would actually... Um, I would put the ARPA paragraph before the select board allocated 70,000 of ARPA funds for the new air packs. Okay. And then, so start with the ARPA, then tell how we've spent it so far. Okay. Great. Yep. Just like having a bunch of editors. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I have my, my highlighter pen out on her book and I'm, oh, she told me I'm not allowed to edit it. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm totally kidding, Sarah. I do not. It's all right. It's my life. Randy's the only one to get his name in here and film. Oh. I mean, Randy Randy's in here. I Randy's try to get here? everybody. Yeah, in he's under the um, board, the uh, the budget committee of which new board oh, member Randy sure. Drury is a member. Oh, yeah. I was you just going to say, I thought I did. You did. <laughs> Don't you give did. me credit because people are going to be calling you. Mark is the unsung hero in our budget. Okay, so let's put Mark in here too. Bill's writing a little report. Mark does a ton of work. Okay, so. I know that, I know that, I know that, but I'm just saying, haven't we in our select board report said, you know, this is the this is the proposed increase to the budget and please see the... I can add that if yeah. you would like. I mean, in, the, in the past, what Sarah has been doing is tacking the whole piece that I do onto the end of the select board report. Oh, all right. Okay, that takes care of it. I'm sorry, I forgot that. Thank you, Phil. And I'll make I'll have but Mark Harrison here. Where do you want me to put him, Randy? Yeah, I mean he dr he drives that budget committee. Yeah, he, does he does a ton of work there. Okay, and, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's that budget committee is like no other budget committee I've ever seen in my time here. 
you could say the budget committee led by yeah Mark, Mark Harris, right. Harris right. of which new board by member the way, the and jury is a needs member. To submit a report too. Yeah, we've already discussed that, and Good. I believe Mark's already. We've we've seen a draft. All right, I'll say that. All right, I will I will find a place to put that in here somewhere. Maybe right before we get into your uh, a big thanks to the budget committee as led by Mark Harris for uh, putting together the helping to put together the capital improvement plan, right? And also to focus. What else do you want to say? All right, we'll figure it out. I don't know. I just want to recognize his yep. efforts yeah. because yeah. Without, yeah. without him, the, that thing would be dead. The capital group? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And, yeah, he's he's put so much effort into that. Okay, good. And uh, I will try to link it to your uh, your five report. Great. A period after plan on upon the recommendation of the Planning Commission at the very end. I like that. The com upon Planning Commission is free to, comma, well, comma, plan, period. Is it, by the way, is it called the Capital Planning Committee or is it called the, is that the full name of it? it like it's Capital called, improvement. CIP is Capital Improvement Plan Committee. Planning, isn't it? Yeah, Planning. Capital CIP Improvement Planning. But, I mean, but we're not, we're not we're actually separate from, we're not separate from the Budget Committee. The Budget okay. Committee is just charged with, the you know, pushing the CIP. All right, let me just forward. rewrite that, okay? Mm -hmm. The budget committee, which new has has some similar to, all right. Let me just figure out. Figure out. Oh, but so there's no official committee, right? No, no. Okay. It's part of. It falls under the. Okay. It's part of our duty. To all right. Great. Perfect. That was the best thing that you guys that happened this year, I think. Yeah. We'll see okay. if everybody thinks. so. <laughs> <laughs> I think people will really Proof appreciate will be it. In the pudding. They've wanted that kind of. They've wanted that kind of long view for a long time. Yeah. Okay. So how about I just, uh, if you guys want to say pass with edits and I can just circulate it. Mm -hmm. And if you guys have any problems, just email me entirely. Vic, did I leave you out of this report? No, I Vic don't. Dwyer. Okay, good. To hire another town resident to join the road crew, Richard Dudley. Okay, good. And select board, like road commissioner and select board member, Vic Dwyer. Well, and there's, ooh. Phil is not running. So Phil, who is going to write this budget report every year? If not, you. We're going to call you up. <laughs> Subcontract. <laughs> Subcontract. That's perfect. We're all volunteers here, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. So any other edits or comments about this? Okay. So um, we don't have to. Oh, do we have to move that we're passing? Problem. No. Tell you that it's good to go. Action good. Okay. Um, so there's no action on that one. So now, um, anything else before we move to the next agenda item? Okay. Next agenda item is setting a date for the special meeting to approve the March 7th, 2023 annual town meeting warning and, if necessary, decide on whether town meetings should be held in person at Rumney School or by Australian ballot. Action likely. Okay. Who would like to begin this conversation about, I can begin by saying that I am in favor of having town meeting in person, as um, many things are in person now, including our select board meetings. Um, and I think it does give people an opportunity to um, potentially have some lively discussion about some of the items that are on our warning. Um, it allows us to have perhaps a potluck meal afterwards and see our community members. Um, you will notice that, uh, actually, did everyone get a copy of the letter from Susan Clark, yes. um, who also yes. believes in the benefit of in-person town meeting um, and that if people want to come, they can wear a mask or they can, they will have the option of um, listening in via Zoom, so that technology will be available. However, they will not be able to do any votes, so you still cannot. Is that right, Sarah? There's still yeah, no they opportunity, they can, yeah. They can participate and listen, but they cannot. Right, um, on the floor stuff. So that is my comment. Is there anyone else who would like to share a comment about their thoughts about having town meeting in person, or would they rather have it by Australian ballot? Vic. I had rather have it at Australian ballot. Okay, tell us why. I think that um, you are correct. Um, 
that uh, it gives the people people chances to talk back and forth about it. Uh, but with that said, it doesn't give those people that are, that are not at the meeting. It's it's the same old debate. Mm -hmm. It's nothing new. It does not give them uh, a, an opportunity to do that if they're not there. Uh, not everybody can be there. Um, I think that it's just uh, it boils down to if you have a if you have it on Australian ballot, uh, it just gives people more people more opportunity to vote. I don't think in actuality it changes anything. Uh, it's uh, from when you have a, a in-person vote. I think what passes will pass. What doesn't pass won't wouldn't pass anyways. I don't think anything is a difference. It's just the per the perception, uh, the equity in having the opportunity for more people to participate. I mean, we all know that not, I mean, how many people show up at that? I mean, people say 100, 150. I don't know if that's so sure. But that, I just, I, I just solidly feel, uh, I, I I think uh, it's going to be disappointing. It would be disappointing to uh, Susan Clark. Susan's heart is into that, being a moderator and, and having that meeting. Um, but I still think at the, at the end of the day, it gives more people an opportunity to participate in town government. Okay, thank you. Comments? Sure. Um, as far as in-person meetings, I have nothing, any, no reason to say that that doesn't work. Um, you know, I agree with Susan's comments around, you know, folks that want to be vaccinated can be. They have plenty of availability. They can wear masks. The whole nine yards. Um, but I, I definitely agree with Victor that you know, I support anything that's going to provide more uh, participation, if you will. Um, and if we could have a, a combination of the two, that would <laughs> ideally, you know, be wonderful, but we can't. Um, you know, if folks were able to go and have a big, long discussion and kick their ideas back and forth and then vote um, through Australian ballot and those that wanted to tune in could and and talk that'd be great but I don't see that um, that's so. called the select board meeting that people don't come to <laughs> absolutely right, right. Um, so I mean and I if I had to if I had to throw my support behind one or the other um, I think the added participation and access to folks who physically can't be there or you know for whatever reasons maybe they're just too afraid to speak up in front of a crowd um, that's pretty intimidating for a lot of folks um, uh, my support would would be for the Australian ballot and and providing you know more access, more participation. Bill, yeah, um, I agree with Randy and Victor. Um, I think we've been moving in that direction for a while. Um, town meetings are a great old tradition that's really anachronistic at this point. Um, it disenfranchises an awful lot of people. Um, and I think government ought to be about getting more people or giving more people a say, and they say by voting. Uh, the discussion's nice. You can still have the discussion. It probably won't happen in most communities that have gone to Australian ballot. The informational meetings are uh, pretty poorly attended, although I must say that Years ago, when I lived in Arlington, Vermont, um, we had gone to Australian ballot, and this is 25 or more years ago, um, and we did have rousing um, town meetings, although almost nothing, there, there were a couple of other little things. Well, we elected a moderator, <laughs> um, and, and a couple of things that were up, but it really most of it, budget, all that, was, uh, was by Australian ballot, but tons of people still came out for that informational meeting. 
but I, you know, which I kind of thought was the norm and learned later on that no, that it really was unusual. So, um, but yeah, I think as the town grows uh, or has grown and keeps on growing, um, for whatever reason, we don't, we don't seem to get a lot more people coming to town meeting than we have, you know, since I've, since I've been here. Um, the number, the faces, in fact, um, are the same. Um, and so I think for that reason, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly willing to have us uh, to vote in favor of having a town meeting this year, because uh, I agree that I think, you know, we're meeting in public, we're, we're going out, we're going places, people can mask. But eventually, um, I think we do have to move to an Australian uh, ballot uh, down the road. Peter, before I get your comments, Sarah, can you um, please, and you, uh, I'm guessing that you may know this answer. Um, remember the time that people, and this was pre-COVID, wasn't it? They voted to turn town meeting into an Australian ballot, but we had to vote on it? No, that was the first ballot. That was the first yeah. Australian ballot. It was tied. It was a, that oh, was during COVID. It was, that was and that was during vote. COVID, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes, was, okay, so, so tell me if, if, if the board votes tonight to not have town meeting, next year what happens? So this, this is just a temporary is, thing, so right? So a couple of things that, you know, strikes me is that you're, what you guys are talking about is a substantive issue of whether or not you should still have town meeting in person versus what the legislature is saying, which is because of COVID, because of fears of infection, you can temporarily postpone the town meeting. And, that, and they're thinking maybe of including 2024 in this as well. So, but if that, you'd still, after that, would have to hold town meeting by the floor. Now, do you want to put on a ballot? Do you want to put a, war a question on the warning? I didn't think we could. I have to check. I, I know that there is legislate. If you're going to hold town meeting in person, you can put a question on the warning saying, shall we hold it by Australian ballot? Or Next year. No, you can do it this year. This is your warning. But you can't put it on the Australian ballot this year. So let's say you decide not to hold town meeting in person, that you're going to hold it by Australian ballot because of COVID. You can't put that question on that Australian ballot saying we want to have, but if you hold it, if you want to, if you vote to have a floor meeting, you can put that on the warning and then the people at the floor at Romney can have that discussion and they can vote on it. Unless it's brought by petition. It doesn't matter, even if it's brought by petition. There's a lot of stuff brought by petition. The only thing that has to be on the, the, quite, the issue is you can't do what was done in 2021, which is the first meeting by Australian ballot as from now on, should we hold all meetings by Australian ballot? There's an argument to be said that the town is a floor vote town and it has established itself as a floor vote town. These temporary COVID uh, conditions okay. don't erase that. You would have to have a floor vote, and you would have to have it warned, and you would have to have a discussion, and the voters at the floor, at vote, the floor vote would have to vote to go toward our Australian ballot, just like they did <clears throat> back in the day with the school. Could we back up just a yes. minute? Are we, are we, <laughs> so we've really got two decisions here. I mean, the first decision is that we want to go forward with an in-person town meeting this year. Because and, of COVID. Uh, that's the issue. Right, right. And, and for me, uh, I think we should. Um, that said, if, we're going to, if we are going to do that, then maybe it does make sense to put, something on the, to put something on the warning and let's have a vote. The thing I don't like is, you know, exactly what, what Randy and Vic are talking about. The people who go to town meeting every year are going to get to decide whether we continue to have a real town meeting. And guess what? There's a good chance they're gonna say, hell yes, we like town meeting. <laughs> and all those people and all those people who don't come to town meeting aren't gonna get a chance to vote on it. And I think there's, as far as I know, from, from what I've heard and what Sarah's telling us, there's no way around that. So 
you know, let's try and let's try and see what happens. I mean, I, it's a sad day to me, and I I agree with everything. I basically agree with everything everybody said. I mean, I agree with with Randy and Victor, um, but I also agree with Liz. I think it's a nice tradition and it's a nice thing. I think if we are going to go to Australian ballot, you know, the we need to really do a PR job to try and uh, to try and get people to come to the informational meeting. Um, what we have to remember is that the informational meeting, you can't amend, one of the things you can't do with Australian ballot is amend any of the articles, you either vote, vote up or down. So, and at the informational meeting, of course, you can't change anything. All you can do is talk about them, but maybe by, maybe by having the, the Liz Scharf, uh, covered dish potluck supper, whatever we're going to call it. And, and talking up that meeting, we can get a tur good turnout for the informational meeting and at least have some good discussion and feedback from the residents of our town. Um, that, but that doesn't that have to be before vote. town meeting? Doesn't that have to be before the vote? I mean, and people can start well, voting as soon as Sarah has it ready. Um, so I, I'm sorry, I'm still confused about right now we're right now we are voting on whether or not because of covid we want to take advantage of having a australian ballot for everything that we see on this one that's that's question right. one and that's, that's what we need one. that's what we need to take that's what we need to vote on right. right now if this is what i want to back up to say so we're going to excuse me but that assumes that this proposed legislation that the legislature is talking about passes if, if yeah. that somehow doesn't happen, then we're going to have an in-person meeting. Right. Okay. So, however, let's talk about, so let's say the board decides to vote that we're going to do Australian ballot for this year because of COVID. Right. Next year, what happens? We would have to vote on it again if they had allowed us to do so. If it's 23. Let's say they don't allow us to do so. You would have to have a then we would have to have a. You floor. have to have an in-person town in person meeting next year, and we can put on the warning for the in-person meeting that we're going to vote on the Australian ballot issue, but it's going to be at the in-person town meeting that the vote yeah. takes okay. place. So regardless, if we if we want to do that, there has to if the legislature hasn't extended it, blah blah blah. Yeah. We would have to have an in-person meeting, and and that okay. vote would have nothing to do with COVID. Right. And the reasonings that we were yes, putting that is on because the of other reasons that yes. you're stating. Okay, so um, I think. Sorry, go ahead, Phil. However, we could, in fact, still put an article on this warning. Yes. To address Australian ballot. Right. If we do it in person. If we're doing it in person. Right. Absolutely. You could. You could. The warning. You're not voting on the warning until next week. So you can, we can add an article yeah. that just says, and VLCT has sample language because believe you me, we're not the only town that's considering this. Yeah. Um, we could just put that on saying, shall the town meeting be held by Australian ballot or else it should be, shall the budget be voted by Australian ballot and other, you can still have a town meeting that addresses the special articles. You can, divide, you can do, have that warning and then you can bring that to, then you can bring that to the voters and they can vote whether or not just the but that the budget shall be voted by Australian ballot, or shall all of town meeting be held by Australian ballot? Do, do you put in there 2024? As effect, you would have an effective date as the effect, yeah. effective effective March, March right? 2024. Right. It would have to be the annual town right. meeting right. as effective okay. March yeah. 2024. Yeah. Uh, but we can only have that article if we agree to do town meeting in, in person. person. That's correct. Correct. That's, you can't put it on an Australian. You can't put it on as, oh, as an Australian. Right. So Australian we would have to agree Africa. that we're having town meeting if we wanted to put that in person, if we wanted to have that on the morning. So. But I thought the last time. And can you, this can you just verify that? Because that's. But we did I it know the, that. We did it the last time and it was. It was like we did it under the, the time board. the time after that like you got some my understanding because yeah. I was all I was part of that whole yeah, thing. Yeah. My understanding was that after we had that tie vote, we did the recount and all that kind right. of stuff. My Sarah got some communication saying that basically, you know, you can't do that moving forward. Right. 
The Secretary of State's oh. office said you can't sneak that onto these Australian these COVID Australian ballots. Oh. Plainfield okay. did, and no I think that they ended up. So that's it. Had to be that the town how the town would normally vote. So if the town is normally a floor vote town, it's got a, the floor vote town has to make a decision at a floor vote about whether or not to go either all or just the budget by Australian ballot. Mm -hmm. Like I think East Montpelier, their budget is by Australian ballot, but the special the, articles the aren't. The rest is something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is Callis? Is their budget also their I, budget? I is think us. they're all on, on uh, the floor. On the floor, yeah. So I, I'll just say one more thing in support of town meeting for the record, um, which is really not so much about, and I don't believe Susan is pro, just because we've had many conversations about it, because she likes to be moderator and run the meetings. No, it really is, it is about um, democracy, as is Australian ballot, right? I mean, that really is. It's, you know, that is, you know, everyone having an option and availability to vote, um, which is, you know, why people who are pro votes, get out the votes, are all for, um, you know, mailing ballots and extend, you know, letting people vote on certain days. And those who are anti-voters are against those things because they want, they want to suppress the vote, right? That's not who you guys are. And I don't think that's what anyone is saying. No one wants to suppress the votes. We want more people to be right. able to vote and we want them to have the option. That being said, knowing in our, um, this day and age, what we're losing is actual face-to-face -face communication and people being able to discuss things in a democratic way. And I think that that's really sort of the beauty of town meeting is that for one day, the citizens become legislators and they are you know, able to change something on, mm -hmm. on here and come up with a different you know, thing that we're gonna vote on because there's been discussion. And that is really about our community and, you know, town meeting is sort of the last thing we have that, that gets people in our doors as community that are fully invited to participate, whether they choose to or not, or they can't, um, this, is the, this is an opportunity. And if we don't have town meeting there, Sure, there's the school sports events, there's this and that, but in general, there are not other opportunities for us as a community to engage in a civil um, and civic manner. So that's just where I believe Susan Clark is coming from. She wasn't here to be able to speak, and it's also where I'm coming from. Yes. So I have the BLCT vote to use Australian ballot. Um, and they do note that this has to be, if you're a floor vote town, it has to be voted on by the floor originally. But they, so they say, um, so here are the three things I want you to think of. It says, vote to use Australian ballot. The Australian ballot method of voting only applies when specifically required by statute, such as our zoning regulations, municipal governments, governance charter, we don't have that, or when the law explicitly enables voters to use it for certain items of town business. The three general subjects that the law enables voters to vote by Australian ballot include the election of officers, which we do, budget articles, and public questions. So you could have three different questions here. Vote to use, whether to use uh, Australian ballot to elect officers, that's already done because the, the prior town voters approved that. Vote whether to use Australian ballot for budget articles. Shall the Middlesex adopt all budget articles by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 BSA, blah, blah, blah. So that is one question you could consider. And the second one, and the other one is vote, shall Middlesex vote on all public questions by Australian ballot per, to pursue it? So you should break those two into uh, uh, the articles on the warning. But, Do you want me to add these to, the, to this warning? But are you saying that these warning articles, if we were to put those things, that they are only, can be passed on the floor? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because once upon a time, the voters said, okay. we want, and the- And what we did the other day was wrong. Two years ago, yeah. we were not really allowed to do that. Well, I mean, and, and this gets back to what Vic says. It's gonna be the people that are there yeah. that are gonna yeah. say, of course I wanna have town meeting. So it just, that that is just, are you sure, we're sure about that, that I'm you can Okay, all right. 100% positive. Okay. And, the, and the theory is that, that this year, the voting by Australian ballot was something that was done simply as a health move. And you can't take advantage of that right. to do that. Right. Not for lack of time. Right. So everything, including voting for um, the school budget, for example, was all done on the floor. This was all done on the floor. Once upon a time. Once upon a time. Okay. So if we want to do that, that means we still have to have 
if we ever want to get there, we have to have town meeting in person to be able to have this conversation. So the question, let's go back to the question. I'll of, make a motion okay. to attend town meeting in person this year and also add the question about the Australian ballots for both the budget and town questions on this year's um, notice. I'll second. Is there any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor of Randy's motion, uh, say aye. 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 Uh, those opposed? Okay. Vic is opposed. The ayes have it. And that is article. And so you got all that, Sarah? So yeah. so have have meeting, right? so, yeah. Now we have a long town meeting. So dinner will be served today. Can I make a comment? Uh, unless yes. The trying to, you're, unless the select board gets behind making that change. It isn't ever going to happen because How, to, though? because the unless they really push to make it go to Australian ballot because to what exactly what Phil said the exact same people show up every year they sit in the exact like same, same chairs chair. <laughs> I mean we're not talking it's anything true. different here. well currently the board is behind it it, right, but I'm just saying that I wanted the, to make the majority that, is. But taking absentee ballots for the last three years, we had four to six hundred people participating yeah. in yeah. the vote, as opposed to the hundred and twenty-five, mm -hmm. hundred and fifty that and do get out there. The, the numbers just the show numbers it. show yeah. it. But mm -hmm. my question is, and. Why does the school, I attended the school board meeting Wednesday night. They had 157 people at that budget meeting. Big money. On Zoom. On Zoom. Big yeah, money. Big they, money. You know, big money. But, you know, but this is, I mean, it's big money for the town, but yep. it's, but, you know, it's, you're talking five towns there. Mm -hmm. But we don't even get 25 people. No. Why? Well, I think one of the things, that happened with that school meeting was there were a lot of threats to oh, yeah. cut certain programs. Right. When, whenever you do right. that, right. Um, you're going to bring out a bunch of people. And, and you know, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's a pretty obvious tactic, okay, having used it myself, <laughs> you know, that so threatened to cut the things that are high impact. Busing, sports, arts. Languages. Yep. You're going to bring out a whole bunch of people who are going to beg you not to cut those things. Those so things. they will vote for the budget. You put the money back yeah. in, and that's how you get your budget passed with those things, which you never intended to cut anyway. But it's just it's a tactic. So you, that's why you got 100 and some odd people who showed up to complain about the things that they said they were going to cut. And those things will now get put back. And they'll pass well, none it. of us are going to complain about fixing the roads. Okay, so let's not. keep let's keep on the agenda. Well, can We're I say one thing? Yes. Can I say? Yep. That you, uh, you know, I voted no, and I voted no for a reason. And I heard what you said about you know being able to compromise to mm -hmm. to address things. And Liz, I would say 20, 25 years ago you would be correct. But there's such a difference in beliefs, political agenda, uh, and it's so much one-sided that those people that would vote on an Australian battle, they're not even going to go there. They're not going to go do battle. And we've seen it. We've seen it. It gets very nasty. I mean, remember me a couple, three, four years ago when I asked, just asked the simple question, why are we giving so much money to the town of, uh, to the town of... Uh, Kellogg Hubbard Library? Yes. <laughs> do you remember that? I do. Do yeah. you remember? It's, it's, and, you know, yeah. I mean, I've had that discussion with Susan Clark. Susan Clark said it was wrong. She couldn't control it. Blah, blah, blah. Um, 
but that is the same. I mean, it went on for weeks. So the, it, it's so polarized mm -hmm. one way mm. that that's not going to happen. And those people that want to, that would like to uh, get into a conversation and probably could come to a compromise, aren't even going to show up. And it just... I, I just have one other thing. You know, the, the way to fix this whole problem about the floor vote making the decision about whether or not we're going to go to Australian ballot is to at least try and lobby our legislators to change the law so we're allowed to have a town-wide Australian vote about whether, I mean, I want the most people in town to make the decision on whether we're going to go to Australian ballot or not. And right now we're not allowed to do that. So that's just a setup as far as, as, far as I'm concerned. There ought to be a way that we can put an article on the Australian ballot side of the house asking this question and get the maximum participation. And then however it comes out, it comes out. But we can't do it right now. But maybe, maybe pointing this out to our legislators, they can, they can make a change. Um, yeah, that's a great idea, Peter. Yeah. And I'm happy to reach out to our legislature. We, you know, we have a lot. We have new people. They don't know what's well, yeah. you know, going on. And, and you don't know what. I mean, they may modify. Who knows if they are going to modify the law, the COVID law? You know, we'll, we'll have to right. look at that legislation. I do think it's worth noting that you can take that vote from the floor. You can. Vote, they can. It can be a secret vote. Any any time anybody that's from true. the floor right. vote can ask for a secret vote. And I have the little point, ballot box yeah. and I have Good a little point. paper and anybody could do it. So if you feel strongly about it and you know people, you can just assure We could just them. say it's going to be a secret vote. Well, right. someone no, has to break, they have to okay. ask. They have to ask. Someone has to ask. Yeah. yeah. Someone has to ask. It can't be one of us. No. Well, well, someone, well, has to, someone has to move a paper ballot. Right. Yeah. Okay. But, I, but, you know, yeah. as, as part of the political part of this process, I think Assuming, assuming we go ahead with the in-person meeting, which we voted to do, and we add this article to the warning, then it's important to get the word out that this is an opportunity for those people who are interested in transitioning to Australian ballot to come and vote, but they need to come to town meeting. Yeah, right, exactly, yeah. Peter. Yeah. Can I just ask this quick question? Just yes. To Where on the morning would you like this to appear? Oh. Somewhere early. Right well, that, and that's a good point because. Because people are going to be tired. They, we, want, we don't want people to leave. And people get tired of going through all those well, we articles. We also don't want people who are, who are rushing from work. So we should make. How about some, article between Article 5 and 6 or so something? So the budget is the seven. budget, no matter what, the budget's at 515, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's then why do. Not, why um, not fo immediately following? Yeah, put it yeah, right, put after, right, after, right after that one. 515. Make it article. Where seven. does it say 515? Right here. It's a, article 6, right? Yeah, like, make oh, it article, right, article 6. six. Yeah, okay. so, yeah, between 6 and 7. Right? Yeah, so make yeah, it. Yeah, so if it follows right after the budget, then right. you know, people that will might stay be the, for both. the chance yeah. that you're going to have the majority yeah. of the That's people. That's a good but, timing, actually. Yeah. And then Article yeah. 7 is a nice well, little buffer before we start talking. It may not go, so, so you know, we have 430, we meet, everybody talks. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So we're, we're splitting, there's going to be two articles, right? Isn't that the way the motion sure. yeah, you made so it was? Yeah, so basically the first is the budget, and then the second was the town Public. questions. Public questions. So yeah. The, um, so that would know, be seven and eight, and just bump everything else down. So yeah, article six, the thing is that if we don't, you know, are we going to get to article six? What if we, remember, article seven is by Australian ballot, so now we're going to article eight, article nine. Yeah, so seven is going to be a Passover. Yes, seven's a Passover, and I mean, I think that, you know, the, these other things go by pretty quick, because article two, that's Australian ballot. All, article one is moderator. That's usually a slam dunk. Mm. Article two, that's Australian ballot. Article three, reports of town officers, or everyone's got the town report, just get past that. We're not doing anything radical to the four, the four payments. Not doing anything with it. Right, That's so the same, right? It's the same. Yeah. The interest is the same. Then you get to the budget. Then the Article 7 is on Australian ballot. So I think you might be better if you just wait until after Article 9, do you think? No. I, think I would do it right before. after the budget. And I would right do it right people after the for the too. budget, and then they can talk about whether yeah. they want to put the budget on to okay. Australian All ballot. Right. All right. Yeah. Just, I'm just worried that it's going to get it's going to be too early in the game, but maybe not. You mean too early that people won't have showed up? Yeah. Oh, there'll be budget discussion because you're going to get into that CIP thing. Yeah, but this, the, the thing is that the, the budget, yeah. 
They passed over the important. budget to get to because the budget yeah, will be yeah. handled at yeah. five fifteen. Do you want me to put something in the morning that says this will be handled oh, in the end? Following immediately following the budget. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. makes sense to me. Let's see if we can I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. If they yeah. right. yeah. isn't five fifteen. Right. So now it's like four forty five. And and Susan will say, Well, we're gonna move on because we're gonna come back to the budget at five fifteen. Oh yeah, I, I would I would do it immediately following yeah. the budget. Okay. okay. See if we can. Let's can see you also? If, if you word it that way, then time it doesn't matter. So instead, you have five fifteen. You could put the parentheses immediately following Article Five, I know. or whatever that article is for the budget. Yeah. Peter, you right? Can you do that? I think so. I think I'm going to have to. I think I'm going to have to see whether or not that's a, if that's legally allowed. The concept of a warning is just so that people read it and say. I'm going to come to this point. I'm not going to come to the meeting. I'm to, this is what I'm interested in. This is what I'm not interested in. So we don't want to misguide anyone. Yeah. Right. All right. I'll see if I can put in that word, wording to it. Otherwise, otherwise, I think you're safe if you just say after, the, after creating the funds, then you can go directly. I think you're safe putting it there. The people are going to show up. They're going to show up for the budget. Yeah. They're going to give. They're going to be interested in the funds. They'll be, go. Then they're going to be. Then they'll vote on the Australian ballot, and then they can go home or vote down whatever their special. I don't see tons of people leaving. They're going to miss. They're going to miss the delicious dinner. Yeah, the the dinner that Peter's making. Yeah. <laughs> Along yeah, with the fire department. Said the fire department. <laughs> but wait, can you just do? This is a totally separate thing. Can you do at a rate of zero point five percent? Because some people don't know what 0.5 percent means. They see five percent. Sure. It's your warning. Yeah. Um, okay. So, d does everyone? Do, do we need to vote on this? No, because you're yeah. going to vote on the warning yeah. next week. Okay. Um, okay. So, do we have any other discussion about this? So, there's no action. No, we already did the action. Okay. Now you have to pick a date where you're going to meet next week. Oh yeah, what date? Yeah, I thought we already. 24th, I thought. Well, does it, Randy, have, you have a budget committee? I have a budget committee meeting oh. prior to. What time? Uh, we usually do those at 4 or 4.30. 4 4.30, okay. he said today. I have, Yeah, so I haven't seen that email. So yeah, it's at 4.30, 4 so. Yeah. Yeah. I have a doctor's What day are we talking about? I know we typically uh, the do twenty five. Like we could Tuesday. probably do something if I had an hour for that budget committee meeting. So maybe five thirty. So five thirty or even six o'clock, depending on other people's schedules on, on You probably could do that by Zoom, right? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, let's do it by Zoom. Okay. What time six? Like six, yeah. Six o'clock, Peter, does that work for you? Yes. What is it called? So, special selection special. meeting? Yeah. Special yeah. To vote on the and then we just have to stop down and Sign it, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's easier then. So Do we need to sign it by a certain time, Sarah? I'm sorry? Like by the next day or something? I mean, you will, so, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you will have approved it and voted so for, for it. And so if it breaks it, out, it's yeah. fine. And this is called to vote on the um, warning. Okay, stuff, to vote on mm -hmm. warning. Yep. Okay. So we're talking Can I stay at home? 6 o'clock, right? Yeah. yeah. Go on Zoom and not vote in on the Zoom. Select board. And just be held by Zoom, right? Yeah, Four thirty. You can. Yes. You just can't vote. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So is are we all set? Can we move on to so our six thirty agenda item at seven fifty whatever? Six fifty. Yeah. Um, treasury report update on town financial issues action possible. I'm going to make it quick. Yay. Nothing to update. Um, I just want to thank everybody for working on the budget. There was probably more input put in this year from the select board, the budget committee, everybody. Um, so it was really good. Great. Well, thank you, Dorinda, for dealing with all of our changes and plugging into the spreadsheet. <laughs> And getting it right. <laughs> well, that's always scary. Right, I know. Any any questions for Dorinda about the treasurer uh, about treasurer stuff? Nope. Okay. So under other business, we have um, approving the 2023 certificate of highway mileage action likely. It has some changes from last year, so I gave you if you guys approve it. No, you didn't, you didn't okay, you signed it. Doesn't look like it needs to be signed by anyone else. It needs to be signed by all of you guys. Okay. Okay, where's the Most basically identifying what we have for roads in the town. Correct. 
Is there a place to, oh, we sign it right here. I gotcha. All right. There you go. I don't think so. No, I think we're good here. Okay, thank you. Okay, any questions about that? Certificate of mileage, anyone? Nope. Hearing none, we're going to move to Cody Wendell's curb cut. No, 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 you got to vote on it. Oh, I, I, I have to vote I, on it. I, Sorry. I All right, so Don't is there a motion? I, 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 okay. Bill's moving it. Second? Who seconds? I'll second Vic it. Vic is seconding it. All those in favor of the uh, 2023 Certificate of Highway Mileage, say aye. 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 Peter? Aye. Okay. The aye. ayes have it. All right, so Cody Wendell's curb cut on Laura Barnett Road. This just needs a signature, right? It doesn't need a vote. I think so. He's, uh, I gave it all. I gave it time for you guys to review, and if you guys, uh, sir, you, sir, what I would do is make a motion to authorize Liz to sign it, and then you're done. Okay. I vote we authorize Liz to sign. Is there a second? Second. Okay. I did. No um, discussion on it. So where am I signing this? Oh, select like board signature. And authorize. Liz so all those in favor of Liz signing the petition, I mean the um, um, curb cut. <laughs> okay. Uh, is that yours? What's today's date? Well, one's mine, one's yours. And then Today? where's the, uh, the, the road Okay, mileage. that's signed, Sarah. Oh, it's over there. Over there. And let's see, um, approving the minutes of the January 3rd select board meeting, action likely. Any motions? For approving the minutes that we have the copy of that we talked um, about in great length. So moved. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, second. And Phil seconds. We were all here. I think we were. I think so. Yes, all right. So I'll pass that around if you could sign that. Um, we'll take an official vote. Oh, do we need to vote? Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. All those in favor of the approving the minutes, say aye. 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 January third. Okay. Opposed. Alrighty. Orders, um, those are being passed around. I need to sign them. Randy, do you need to sign them? I still need to sign them. And yeah. you've you've looked at them, you too? I have. Okay, and they look all in order, shall we say? Okay. They appear to be. Uh, do we need to approve the orders? No. Uh, we just I sign them. Just sign them. Correspondence, Sarah? Nope. Okay. And then I'll just quickly, um, so that we stay on target to get out of here at 7, I just wanted to say that. Um, uh, that accident that happened on Culver Hill Road um, was exactly what I predicted would happen this winter. Um, and it was, I would say, probably the absolute worst accident that's happened there. Um, and um, the, the mother of the driver, um, you know, wanted, had sent an email, has sent an email, I guess you would call that a little bit of correspondence um, with Sarah and and me about um, just reiterating the need to somehow warn or make that less dangerous. I'm not sure how that would happen. She was suggesting a guardrail um, where that culvert is. Um, I will say that when those accidents happen, they happen, um, generally they take out the mailboxes they always take out the mailboxes and then they either swerve back onto the road and then go over the ditch and hit a tree. No one has done it as bad as, as that. And while he claims he wasn't going over the speed limit, the speed limit is 35 and on that day he should have been probably going five miles an hour and I'm sure he wasn't, right? So, but regardless, it was somebody who's not used to the driving conditions and you will lose control and that was why i had been advocating for a sign so um i understand that the ground's frozen and we're not going to get a sign um until the ground is thawed um and we just hope that people drive safely so anyway i just wanted to um bring that up can there be a discussion yeah. yes would you like to discuss it yes um, yeah, I don't see the point of the email. What's, what was the purpose of that? The email from the mother? No, from you. Um, oh, because I wanted you guys to know that this is what happened. When I, when I saw it happen, I sent the email to you and Eric to say this is an example of what you're talking great, about. Do you get great satisfaction out of saying I told you so? 
No, <laughs> Vic. That's what it seemed like. That's Vic, what it seemed absolutely like. not. And this, I... you know, Eric and I talked about this, and we just thought it was pretty inappropriate. Now, with that said, mm -hmm. who are you pointing the finger at for not having the sign? <laughs> I am not you pointing the finger. You at said you there. wanted to sign at, 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 in, a, in mm -hmm. July, was it? Yep. I immediately said to Eric, get a sign. Mm -hmm. I said, it's not going to go away. Liz is not going to go away. <laughs> it's I not, said, because no, the actions are going to Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me finish. Yes. It, you know, because we weren't going to say anything, but as soon as you brought it up, mm -hmm. I knew we were going to say it. I have told him and reminded him, you get that sign? No. I'm going to get it. Not, then it came, it was cold, then it was dry, and then it was. I said, Eric, stop over to my house, I got the perfect sign for you. He came over, it's a big four foot sign, so all you could do is paint it. It was kind of like tongue in cheek, but Eric, get the sign. So, we didn't get the sign up. So what do you want to do? What do you want to do? I've done everything I possibly could do. I it, no, what, this, what do you want me to do? I mean, when you get a chance to put the sign up, and I will also say I don't think the sign is necessarily going to solve the problem. But I will say that this is, and and the reason that I brought this up is because it happens every year, and it happens multiple times a year, and y you have never seen it because usually someone just comes and does a tow truck. This kid could have died, and I'm not blaming the town. I am just reiterating that this is a dangerous curve. And this is an example of at the worst, this was by far the worst. You will know I did not come out and see you and Eric who were out there for hours dealing with it. And I appreciate that. I did not come out of my house and say to you, I told you so, Vic. I stayed in my house. No, All you I put did it was on, you put it on, you put it on the the town um, email. Yeah, which is I wanted open you to, to everybody. Well, oh, I, mean, I don't you, care if it's open I would have felt better if you'd have come out and give me help. No, it, it's it, it, it's. I just I, hey, we're going to agree to disagree, but I just thought fine. it was pretty yes, inappropriate. Peter, I don't think it's inappropriate at all. Can because I, can I, I ask a question? Excuse me. Can I ask a question. Do we have the sign, Victor? No. No. Why not? I mean, just is it on order? Is it? No. Okay. So, I've had this discussion with you, saying. Peter, before. If you and want I've to said, pick on me, that's if, fine. I've had this discussion. Now, it's not just unique to Eric. It's unique to all road foremans. They, they kind of do what they want to do. So, Well, I mean, so I picture it like this, okay? Well, you can picture he's, anyone. He's, Let me he's got a priority list this big. Right. And this sign admittedly so, probably isn't going to make a significant difference. So that that falls way down on the priority Could be. list. Could so be. It's, Whatever. I don't know. I don't feel like it's it's something that because Liz sits here or anything else that it's, that's okay, it needs to move to the top of the list because that's just not right. At the end of the day, if Eric's priority list is 100 items long and this is number 99 always, then it's always 99 and we have to be conscious of that. People need to slow down during inclement weather. Right. This isn't this isn't something that's the town's issue. It's you know, it, it, we'll get a sign when we can get a sign. But you know, he's got bigger issues to to deal with than. Okay, I than it's this just for the record so, that when this when the next thing happens and someone God forbid dies, because and and we have on the record that actually we never ordered a sign because we don't care that a townsperson is bringing up a safety issue on our roads. I, I'm, I have nothing more to say about it. I know to drive safely there. I'm not thinking about me and my car. I know exactly how to take that turn. I'm thinking about the other people using it and knowing that an ambulance came and took that kid to the hospital and you're now telling me that actually, we told you, Liz, we built, we, we ordered a sign to appease you. No, that, and, and yes, I will continue to send you emails when people go off the road 
so that it's shown on the record that this is a dangerous spot and well, that we did nothing about it. You've stated before. That and it has nothing to do with my being on the board that I'm bringing this no, up. No, but you've stated before uh, that that's your common sense. You talk about this a lot, your common sense rules that are senseless. Okay. Let's, sure, let's, all right. I'm going to as, as, a, as a board. You just can't make it perfect. Exactly. I am chairing this right now, and we are adjourning this meeting unless there's anything else that any matters uh, I, that come before the board. All, I'd like to be heard before you adjourn the meeting. Two yes. things. Number one, I believe that the select board, and I don't know whether the right word is directed, suggested, or whatever, to get this sign. So it should not be 99th on the list. We should get the damn sign ordered and put it up. If we as a board want that sign, it should be All done. Right. And, you know, I don't understand why it isn't done, but on some level, Eric is a good guy. He should understand that's a priority, not for, just for Liz, but for the select board. And we're concerned about the safety of our citizens, and we want to get that sign up. Now, maybe we can get the sign and attach it to the tree until spring when we can put it on a proper post. I don't know, but... Come maybe on, guys. Next, I mean, we, maybe the next guy going down will take the sign down to us in the two mailboxes. <laughs> Listen, I'm I am really sick of this, and I don't like it, and I don't think it's the right way for us as a select board to be handling this situation. Liz has come to us as a citizen. Is she also a board member? Yes, she is. But she has pointed out that there is a known problem with a known issue, and we're just blowing it off by saying it's way down Eric's list and he's never going to get to it. That is. I didn't say that, Peter. I didn't say that. I have. Randy said, Randy said that, Victor. Randy I, I, said that. I'm not saying you said it. Okay, I, I, wait a minute. That, I wanted that sign. Put that Victor, sign down and it hasn't got done. So what do you want to do? Victor, please. I think Dorinda, plan. would you like to say something? Dorinda <laughs> has something that she would like to say. I am chairing this right now and I will direct who speaks. Dorinda? I, I want to get off that subject. I was going to ask if there was any quick update on the building inspection that we had here that you wanted to share or when oh, we from might VIA? see. Yeah, or would we see something? So VIA came, um, thank you for that question. They came uh, last week um, and they did basically what they did was they photographed the building. Like they did this thing where right. you can basically put it in so they don't have to come here all the time. So they spent most of their time doing that. Um, and then um, yes, there are a bunch of meetings that we have planned um, for the public. Um, and I have it on um, sort of a uh, calendar of dates that, Sarah, I believe you have that calendar of dates. M some of them are select board meetings and some yeah. of them are um, like in-person, like extra meetings. And the video is on the, you can access it from the website, from the okay. homepage of the website, from the whole meeting. Are the meeting dates posted or are those going to be announced as, because there wasn't a lot of notice on the last. Yeah, and that was my fault. It had to do with, they gave us three dates and then Peter and I, when he was telling me about his issues, I wanted him to be included and then he couldn't and then we at the last minute they were like this is the only day we can do it okay so that's how that ended up but yes there will be future um february 21st march 21st and april 18th okay and those on the web. are those not select bar meetings or are those almost all, all of them are select board yeah there's a there's one or two that is not a select bar meeting so i'll have to look at my um maybe just one so initially we talked about a discussion at town meeting is that not going to happen or is it or we're going to have just an update at town meeting but we're behind schedule okay. um, with them so there's not gonna, i mean there was never going to be a vote at town meeting it was more no, about this is where we are at um but what we're the next thing that we're doing is tomorrow i'm meeting with um dave Makita and sandy levine to come up with a town survey to send out to everyone to just get some input on like what do they in what do they vision what is their vision for a um a town um a town hall yeah. so that that survey is going to come out that they will then incorporate that when they're um when they're coming up with their ideas and their plan okay great just was wondering yeah. about that i yeah there might just be I just, have, yeah. I just have one quick thing before we yeah. adjourn yeah so um i i do not believe 
Dorinda, do you know if there's a sprinkler system in our fire department? Because I don't believe there is. I think, I think. <laughs> I think, was, wasn't that what he was testing? No, I think, I think Jeff is confusing the sprinkler system in the consolidated communications building. I think it's connected to the alarm and that's what he was talking about. But I will, I will get to the bottom of that and make sure that that's correct. But where we, where we are on Welch Park is, um, the Welch Park attorney, John Riley, is, is drafting uh, one more revised operating agreement, which is the next step. And then also um, whatever the dissolution document is gonna be. But that definitely presumes that uh, Benderson Development, which owns which owns the consolidated building, is responsible for the fire pond, the pump, and you know we will no longer have anything to do with that. So, more news okay. to follow. I, I will look into that soon because that put that puts a big monkey wrench in this whole deal. If in fact we are connected to that fire pond, right? Well, the other thing is the parcel that that pond sits on. Somebody has that as part of one of their parcels. And I thought it was the town. I believe, I believe it is. I, I mean, John is looking at all that stuff, Dorinda. He's got all the documents. Um, I believe it is common property to the park. Okay. Not not owned by any individual well, owners. That would be that would be deeded over. That would be deeded over to Benderson. Okay. There, there's going to be, you know. All I'm saying is I'm working as hard as I can to get documents and, and bring this across the finish line and I'll keep you all posted. Yep. Anyway, thank you. Okay, any other thing to come before the board? I'd like to just a clarification on that, uh, what Peter said about the, the sign. System. Oh, the sign. Yeah. What, what's the minute say? I mean, I'll do whatever it says. I just want to know what it says. In today's minutes? Today's minutes. Sarah, what does it say in today's minutes about the sign? Peter said he wanted, I think he said he wanted to make sure or something. But well, I he's, what, I, what I have is that Peter, uh, he said, Peter, the said Peter, Peter said the board had directed that sign, get it and put it up. Don't understand why it wasn't done yet. This isn't, it's not a priority for Liz, but for the select board and a concern for safety of our citizens. Although I don't Thank believe you. it was ever a vote for, I mean, we don't vote on You don't have to vote for a sign. It's yeah, I think we just discussed it a long time ago. Not to make belabor it, but should something, should you be considering something more than a sign? I mean, if it's really that dangerous, know. you know, if it's, if that's yeah. how people are talking, it, should there be a bigger discussion? Sure. All I, I would I suggest is that the sign is, the sign is a darn good first step. If we need to, Put a guardrail there that's an issue that involves a lot of money and a lot of construction work mm -hmm. and whatever and if we're going to do that that's definitely a a bigger longer discussion but at least to get a warning sign up we will have made some effort to uh help with the safety of that situation right and even maybe a a, a sign farther uh, away from it this is you know danger um whatever yeah, yeah abrupt turn ahead or, or dangerous curve ahead, yeah, something to get people to- Yeah, and I had an to... email conversation with um, Eric about the location of the sign, which ah. led me to believe that a sign had actually been ordered because he asked me where we should place it. But oh, okay. Apparently it wasn't yeah. ordered, so. Um, but, and again, I did think about that. I was like, maybe it needs to even be further away because you crest over the hill and then you have no control. Yeah, right. that's what like I was maybe thinking. Maybe it's like yeah. right at the Brett's house. Yeah, it's like as you sure. hit the crest I, I, maybe, yeah. or as you're coming up to it. Yeah. All okay. I want to do, guys, is, is, is get this done. It's a small item in terms of cost, but to the extent it's been brought to our attention, there are other areas in town which you're of concern too, but... When they're brought to our attention, we need to deal with them. Yeah. So one sign with a curve on it going in the right direction is what we're looking for. Because well, Eric and I have had this discussion. Do you want that or do you want chevrons all the way around the curve? I thought about that, Vic. I was like, maybe that's what we need are those big, giant things. No, I don't think we do. Well, they, no, they make them different yeah. heights. Yeah. And, that, and Eric and I have had that discussion. And I said, if that's what you want, get it. But just... Yeah. Do something. 
The I don't know. I'm sort of picturing a dangerous curve ahead. But I don't. I mean, can you make your own words on a that. sign? I don't know if I don't know oh, if the yeah, sign. I've seen oh, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, dangerous curve, sharp. Curve. I mean, I, I think sharp the word "dangerous" ahead. will catch somebody's attention. Dan yeah. You know that. I'll do anything that this board wants to Actually, do. I just want. And then they'll hit their break earlier want. and go off the road and in a you're different place. And you're talking about those things that are on um, French road, like between French like and this. Culver, right? Yeah. And they go like, like this. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Are we so, adjourned? Uh, okay. Yes, this meeting is adjourned. Yay. Thank you, Peter. Thank you.